U.S. President Joe Biden is leading a global campaign to ensure the world's largest corporations pay their taxes wherever they are. His administration wants to raise trillions of dollars to fund ambitious spending plans. If the effort succeeds, it would also end a so-called race to the bottom that has forced countries to sacrifice revenues to keep companies from moving to tax havens. Paolo Montesidio reports. Amazon, the world's biggest retailer, is based in Seattle in the U.S. state of Washington. Last year, its profits nearly doubled to more than $20 billion. And yet, it paid just $1.7 billion in taxes to the federal government, or an effective rate of 8 percent. U.S. President Joe Biden says that's unacceptable. It's just not fair. It's not fair to the rest of the American taxpayers. We're going, to, we're going to try to put an end to this. The Biden administration is pushing for reforms to ensure American companies pay more taxes. It's taking aim at a legal loophole large companies have used to trim their bills, the shifting of profits to jurisdictions with lower taxes. Amazon has benefited from this, but its founder, Jeff Bezos, says he supports higher taxes so more money can be spent to improve infrastructure in the U.S. In order to eliminate tax havens, Washington is calling for a global minimum corporate tax rate of 21 percent. For the largest American firms, those with at least $2 billion in annual income, it's proposing a tax rate of at least 15 percent, regardless of where they make their money. And President Biden wants to increase U.S. corporate income tax to 28 percent from the current 21 percent. The changes are expected to raise as much as $2.7 trillion over 15 years. We think they can afford to help rebuild uh, our workforce, help invest in industries of the future, and make sure our infrastructure makes us competitive with China. The International Monetary Fund is in favor of higher taxes. The lender is asking members to contribute $650 billion this year to support cash-strapped nations deal with the economic impact of the pandemic. It says higher government revenues will be key to recovery efforts. Uh, it is a, a big concern that we have a large amount of uh, tax shifting, tax avoidance, countries sending money to tax havens. Uh, and that's reducing the tax base uh, from which governments uh, can collect revenues. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development is considering the U.S. proposals. Members like Ireland, which charges businesses just 12 percent, have been apprehensive. But supporters like France and Germany say the proposal will increase revenues for everyone at a time when nations need it the most. Paolo Montesilio, TRT World. Well, for more, let's go to Joanne Weiner in Washington. She's an economics professor who specializes in tax policy at George Washington University. Welcome back to the program, Joanne. Now, the Biden administration has proposed several changes to tax policy, both international and domestically in recent days. But let's start with the ideas that it sent to the OECD. And that suggests introducing a system that would tax multinational corporations based on their sales in each country, which does seem like an obvious premise. What exactly are companies doing at the moment to avoid paying tax in the countries where they actually do business? Well, thank you. It's nice to be here to talk about corporate taxes. And it is true that it is one of my specialties. I wrote my dissertation in part on the uh, a method designed to help uh, countries prevent uh, tax, uh, tax avoidance, I should say. Under the current system, when a country's tax rate is higher than that in another country, it's profitable for the company to attribute income to the low tax state and expenses to the high tax state. And that's through a method known as transfer pricing. And that's been the method since uh, basically the world started taxing companies way back at the turn of the 20th century. I worked on an OECD project when I was at the U.S. Treasury where we tried to establish rules that would stop the harmful race to the bottom in corporate tax policy, not just in tax rates, but in favorable tax loopholes, as you mentioned. 
the idea of attributing uh, income on where sales are located is something that I studied as uh, in graduate school. It's a method known as formula reapportionment. And rather than have companies identify where their profits are earned, you just assign profits to where their sales or companies or employees are located. Many say that that's a way to stop such uh, income shifting, and it does have many attractive features. But it's a long slog to get uh, international agreement on, on switching the underlying method of taxing multinationals. It, it sure is. So the offer on the table from the US now is that it wants to give countries the power to tax a slice of the global profits generated by around 100 of the world's largest companies. Many of those companies are based in the United States. State. So they would essentially be sacrificing a part of its current taxing rights uh, for Washington. What does the U.S. want in return? Well, the U.S. is, it's been an active member in a lot of the global attempts to sort of coordinate tax policy, but it's always been the U.S. view um, that countries should have their, have sovereignty over what the, their tax policy should be. But that said, you do need agreement to avoid this race to the bottom. Would the U.S. actually lose revenue if they're in agreement to switch methods? It's not clear at all because we don't know what companies actually have in their tax records. A lot of that is, is private. The Treasury, of course, tries to find out, but it's very, very difficult to really pin it down. And as you've mentioned, there are a lot of perfectly legal ways for a company to reduce its taxes. And that's what most of these companies say, is that they're not breaking the law, they're just following the law. Now, you mentioned that phrase, the race to the bottom. It's what the US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen used earlier this week. She's proposed uh, a minimum corporate tax rate that would be applied uh, in every country to prevent what she says, the race to the bottom, to cut corporate tax rates in countries like Ireland, as we heard, Singapore, the Netherlands. Will a uniform corporate tax rate work in that sense? Well, you know, it's a, it's admirable to try to get countries to agree on how they would tax companies. But I'll just make an obvious point that if you set the tax rate at a perfectly at a minimum rate, let's just say 20% as an example, but you narrow the base to a very, you, you exclude a lot of items from the tax base. Well, then your effective tax rate still is going to fall below, well below that statutory rate. And that's been the problem from, from the get-go in, in tax policy. Even the EU tried to have a, a, a minimum rate back in the early 70s, and that failed because of the inability to coordinate also the tax base, the rules for taxing calculable income. Mm. Now, for decades, we know the international corporate tax system has irritated almost everyone except multinationals and sh their shareholders, as well as countries with low tax rates. How difficult will it be to get those two parties on board? Well, part of it is that do you think that, I mean, do companies think that they should contribute something towards the um, infrastructure or towards running an economy. And, and Jeff Bezos, the current head of Amazon, says now says yes. Um, in the United States, we only gather about $230 billion from companies. Uh, that's that's uh, Those are figures from 2019. Um, that fell by about a third after the 2017 tax cut. Um, there are better ways to probably probably raise revenue from companies than setting a minimum tax rate, things that the Treasury and the OECD is doing now, um, taxing highly mobile intangible income, for example. But um, companies are very clever. And I think when uh, when President Biden says, come on, man, pay your fair share, that might actually get companies to say, hey, we do need some revenue. After all, the U.S. had a federal budget deficit of 300 some billion uh, in February. OK, One Professor more. Joanne Weiner, we will have to leave it there. But thank you so much again for sharing with us your expertise on this issue.